Hello everyone, good morning and welcome back to Sports Today. It's a wonderful Saturday morning, there's a nice nip in the air and of course, if you're joining us, then you like us would be excited about whatever sporting related stuff has been happening around the world. So if you're sitting with a nice warm beverage and about to start your day with your fill of sporting related updates, you're in exactly the right place. So let's not waste too much time, let's just get straight down to the major talking points that we will be addressing in today's news update. First off, they concern this man, Hardik Pandya. The BCCI is reportedly actually keen to now move on from the one captain in all formats uh, template that they have been following for quite a while now, really. And since ever since really T20 World Cup or T20 cricket became a thing, the, the Indian team has stuck with generally having one leader across formats. That can be counterproductive sometimes though and in fact it seems like the board is keen to move away from that because the multiple news reports saying that uh, Rohit Sharma will be kept on as India's ODI and test captain but that this man Hardik Pandya would be given the reins in the T20 format. Now it's an interesting uh, you know change of heart and it's also going to an interesting person in one way because Pandya's captaincy experience is very very limited but in that limited time period he's won one IPL title as a captain of a brand new franchise so quite clearly he knows what exactly it takes to build a team and it actually if it does happen if and when the official confirmation does come it would be a massive massive thing uh, for uh, you know the Indian team and for Hardik Mandana himself because a few years back most people didn't see him as being even a regular now he's not just a regular he's not just batting and bowling well he could very well be the team's new white wall leader at least in the shortest format of the game moving on but sticking to cricket news uh, we have an interesting update for those of y'all who would want to see cricket back in the Olympics. It could very well be happening come 2028 when the Olympics head to Los Angeles. You heard that right. News reports in the British media say that we could very well be in for a six-team competition to determine a gold and silver and bronze medal winner for the sport of cricket. Now, this would mark a return for the sport of cricket in over a century, if I'm not wrong, because I think the last time cricket was in the Olympics would have been all the way back in the 1900s. And that time, it was, of course, played in the test format. But, of course, currently, we might get to see T20 cricket in the Los Angeles Olympics. And right now, obviously, there's no confirmation of that happening. But it is at least very much on the short list of sports that might want to be included in the future. So we could actually be getting to see cricket take place in the Olympics. And sticking to cricket news, and of course, another news that if you're a cricket fan, you would definitely be happy to know. But especially so if you're a Mumbai Indians fan. Why? Well, it's because this man, Jofra Archer, could very well be set to make a return to competitive cricket as early as the beginning of 2023. Now, you'd remember that uh, Archer was part of the IPL auction process last year. Mumbai Indians spent big money on him despite knowing that he wouldn't actually be available for the tournament and that there was no real update on when exactly the bowler would be fit and ready to go again. Now, news reports state that Archer has in fact started bowling again and will be regaining match fitness and could well be match fit from the beginning of 2023. Now, obviously there is some debate as to whether or not the ECB would allow Archer to play in the IPL, which is a high demanding tournament and obviously, you know, uh, could very well put him at risk for injury. They might want to ease him back in, but they might also say, yeah, you know what, go for it. Work on your fitness. IPL is a good place to get that. So if you're a Mumbai Indian fan, you could finally be seeing the dream, uh, you know, fast bowling combination of Jaspreet Bumrah and Jofra Archer bowling together. Now, obviously, it's also good news if you're an England fan, because despite the fact that they have been, you know, uh, they're, don't forget, they're the ODI World Cup champions, the T20 World Champions, but it's always great news when you have Jofra Archer back fit in firing. So it just makes them even more dangerous because remember, they won in 2000, uh, they made it to the semis in 2021 and then even 2022. You know, with Archer not exactly being fully fit in 2021 and 2022, he's not even played. So, a fully fit Archer would do a lot even for the England cricket team. Now, moving our focus on from the world of cricket to the world of football, it's impossible to not talk about this man, Cristiano Ronaldo. His bombshells of interviews with uh, Piers Morgan have obviously created a lot of uh, controversies, left the fan base divided, but quite clearly Manchester United aren't really keen to entertain any more of his shenanigans and could very well be considering legal action against Ronaldo because they state that his interview was actually in many ways a breach of contract. What's more, they are hoping, and, and this is just all source based reporting by the way, that United are hoping that the threat of legal action could very well offer, make Ronaldo offer up 
to actually annul his contract and move on from the club. It, it seems pretty clear at this point that not just is Ronaldo done with Manchester United, but Manchester United seem very, very done with Ronaldo as well. Who knew about a year prior when the happy homecoming was actually, you know, getting underway, that things would be ending like this? No one really, but it's still shocking but not exactly surprising that things have reached a point where Ronaldo has once again made it all about himself. But that's just my opinion. You can let me know in the comments if you disagree with that. Sticking to football news, doubtless you saw that we had done a bit of a small news update yesterday that the uh, sale of alcohol during the Qatar World Cup has now been banned. Now, obviously, this was a bit of a U-turn because generally speaking, we know for a fact that uh, Qatar, being an Islamist republic, generally speaking, doesn't allow uh, you know too much of the sale of alcohol because it goes against religious beliefs. However, there was an expectation that they would be... Uh, in fact, there wasn't an expectation. It was a given that they would be selling alcohol uh, and beers in particular in the match venues for fans. However, a last-minute uh, you know, change of heart has taken place. Apparently, it was due to pressure from the Qatari authorities. And FIFA said that, look, there's not going to be any sale of alcohol or beers during the World Cup. Now, why exactly is that problematic? Well, because it just so happens that the FIFA World Cup actually does have sellers of beer as one of their prime sponsors. In fact, that deal is worth about £63 million, according to the British media. And they are considering what step they should be taking next. Because again, £63 million is a lot of money, but their drink won't be being sold at Qatar at all. Now, don't forget, the non-alcoholic versions of said drink will still be sold, but the, uh, the, you know, the beer company, at the end of the day, exists to sell beers more than it does to sell non-alcoholic beverages. So, Keep an eye out on that. Still a developing story. It's not the end of it. And unfortunately, the Qatar World Cup continues to be plagued by controversies that really have nothing to do with the sport. Anyhow, uh, sticking to, of course, the Middle East, uh, the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix is this weekend and it's a race that really, truth be told, doesn't have much in the way of stakes because, again, championships are decided, uh, both of them, in fact, and really there's nothing to race for except for pride and maybe to get a race win or some good results, strong end to the season. We'll be doing a full preview of the F1, of uh, the final F1 race of 2022, so stay tuned for that, I'll be doing it. Uh, but as things stand, this race I, weekend is also happening and there's plenty of interesting things to keep an eye out on, obviously, because don't forget, a lot of drivers are actually changing teams, so how exactly it is they fare this particular race? could very well determine how does they fare in their new teams as well. So plenty to keep an eye out on, despite the fact that, really speaking, there's very little left to race for. As I said, we'll be doing a full preview, so stay tuned for that. Uh, shifting our focus now to the sport of tennis. Now, uh, the ATP finals are currently taking place and it has, in fact, reached the semi-final stage. Novak Djokovic has been in fine form through the year-ender and, in fact, has not lost a match up until this point going into the semis. So, he would clearly be considered a favourite, especially considering the fact that the other three semi-finalists are Taylor Fritz, who Djokovic will be facing, Kasper Ruud and Andre Rublev. Now, obviously, most people would be rooting to maybe see a new winner this time around, but Djokovic is quite clearly the favourite especially considering the fact that the likes of Rafael Nadal, uh, uh, you know, Daniel Medvedev, who, by the way, Djokovic actually beat recently, and even world number one Carlos Alcaraz aren't actually part of the tournament. Really, it is Djokovic's tournament to lose, but let's see whether or not he actually can get the distance and get yet another year-ender to add to his collection. And we're ending this news update with a bit of a news uh, update that uh, would make you proud if you're an Indian sport fan. Manika Batra has made it to the finals or the semi-finals of the Asian Cup Table Tennis Tournament and she's actually become the first Indian woman to reach the semi-finals of this particular tournament. It's massive news and she had beaten uh, Chen Zhu Yu of Chinese Taipei. Now that in itself is also even bigger because generally speaking, India when it comes to table tennis will fall behind a lot of Asian countries whether it be China, Chinese Taipei or even the likes of South Korea. India have never been able to uh, you know, secure any kind of a foothold so this is actually a really good result for Marika and would be interesting to see how far she can go from here. It would also be something of a redemption of sorts given that, uh, you know, she, don't forget, she won the gold medal in the 2018 Commonwealth Games, didn't really do much in the 2022 edition of the game. So her stock is at a bit of a low, but this win suddenly boosts her stock immensely. And if she can actually go the distance and get India a medal, it would be even better. But even if she doesn't, this is a match, massive, massive achievement that should be celebrated regardless. And 
That's it for this edition of the Morning News Update. Thank you all so much for joining us. Don't forget, if you enjoy what it is that we do over here at Sports Today, don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and tap that bell icon so you know when we're going live or uploading a new video for you guys. Then, you can go ahead and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as well. And don't forget to show the wonderful folks over at the Sports Tech app some love and download their app for the best news updates from the world of sport. Thank you all once again for joining us. As always, I've been Shane Dice. I hope to see you with us through the day. But for now, goodbye.